why we love them. This is why Tommy does what he does. And I want to also say um, uh, that, uh, you know, we've all seen Felix the Cat. We've all seen A Pogo the Clown or an Alice comedy. But the thing is, these films were never meant to be preserved and said, saved in the first place. That's, that wasn't the original intent of these films. I mean, these films were ephemeral. They were of the moment. They were like newspaper comic strips to be read, or in this case, viewed, and then pretty much not seen anymore. There was no TV. There was no uh, you know, a videotape or DVD or TV syndication. or They didn't even reissue cartoons back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. Uh, the later 40s is when they started to do that. So uh, uh, this is why they weren't saved. This is why, as many of you here know, you probably know the figure better than I, that uh, what is it, now it's, they say 75% of all uh, uh, silent movies, movies before 1928, don't exist. I remember when I was a kid, they were saying 50%. What's that? I've heard 90. Uh, I don't know about that, but uh, maybe. It's, it's, it's a lot. Exact figure. It's a lot more than 50. And so I'm amazed we have some of the great classics that we do. And I'm amazed that we have some of the B movies that we do from that period. This is why what this theater does, we're showing them this way, what Tommy does, what we're all doing is important to save the culture, to save the, uh, these films. Okay, so that said, I quickly also wanted to quickly note, as you all did, but I, I made a few notes watching these again. Um, uh, I thought it was really interesting that, I just want to quickly mention that, uh, in that, uh, <laughs> maybe this is just trivial now, but in the Bobby Bumps film, you know, where, where with the, with the rabbit and all that, and they've got that great poster, you know, Fresh Fish, it said, it was an old, you know, uh, one sheet poster for another Bobby Bumps cartoon. If anybody, if you find that poster, uh, find me, and uh, I'll happily take it off your hands. Um, <laughs> The, uh, 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 there's a shot in the early uh, Coco that he showed, the reunion one, where the uh, family is chasing the, uh, uh, the food full of the table full of food. And that, was, that shot was done with cells and backgrounds, which was unlike the rest of the, the, the Coco films, which were done with that, what is it called, slash, cut and slash system, where they actually animated on paper, uh, just on regular paper, and they inked it on paper. Uh, they very rarely use cells, but I noticed they did it in that film. I just wanted to mention these things. And also that Alice cartoon. Holy moly, what a great meta opening that was very much what Tex Avery and Chuck Jones would do in later years, where the character was aware that he was on, on a film, and that he was in front of an audience. That was so cool. They didn't really do that kind of thing back then. Okay, so uh, the final film we have, and why we should care. Uh, actually, to be very very honest, if you guys know the Betty Boop cartoons, and I'm sure many of you do, this is one of the later ones. In fact, it's one of the last that they made. The character kind of ran out of steam. She ran out of uh, being part of the, the time. She was obviously a character of the 1920s, really, or the early 30s. Boop Boop and Doop and all that was old hat by the late 30s. Uh, it's been documented that, that the, they were going to move to replace her with Sally Swing. That was going to be the replacement. They made one cartoon with that character, and then they decided not to. In fact, they canceled the season of Betty Boop uh, in this final year. And instead of going to Sally Spring, they did this uh, series that's completely forgotten and should be mm -hmm. called Stone Age Cartoons that they made. It's kind of a precursor to the Flintstones. But um, uh, that's what was going on at that time. This Buzzy Boop cartoon, um, from 37 and 38, it turns out, something that I had documented decades ago, <laughs> that uh, there were four missing Betty Boop cartoons, missing from TV syndication to begin with. But it turned out that collectors, uh, nobody had these particular four. I will tell you right now that all four do exist and can be viewed. This is the final one that was lost of the four throughout the decades. One by one, they would show up. Almost all of them showed up in Europe, someplace in Europe from an archive, a collector with a 16 millimeter print, this, that, or whatever. Um, one of the films uh, exists only with French titles, uh, and only recently we found the soundtrack somewhere else. So the thing is, uh, the, the, the search to preserve 
not only the silent films, but the sound cartoons that are lost and missing uh, continues. And I think uh, a lot of progress has been made in my lifetime. Um, this particular one, this fourth one that was uh, not found, uh, features a character uh, that uh, named Buzzy Boop. Buzzy Boop was Betty's mischievous niece. Um, the other cartoon that, that debuted that character named just called Buzzy Boop, that was also one of the lost cartoons, but that one had been found about 20 years ago. And this other one, Buzzy Boop at the concert, was the cartoona non grata, or whatever term you want to use. <laughs> the, um, uh, the good news, or how it turned up, and how I even got involved with it, was, um, as many of you know, I was involved with the book of Mice and Magic by Leonard Maughan. And uh, uh, we have, uh, and that book um, uh, has been translated in different countries and different languages. And about 15, 20 years ago, uh, a project started in Russia to translate it into Russian. And it was being done by animators and animation students at a school. It wasn't done by any big publishing company or anything like that. And it took them like at least 10, 15 years to do it. But a lot of the students uh, who were involved were really, it turns out, were really, really doing it because of the love of animation, love of American animation, Hollywood studio animation. And they had found one of my many fanzine articles about the lost, a certain lost cartoons. And they, on their own, decided to check, uh, what's it called, Galsamondo film or something, that's the name of the big Russian film archive, an archive that we in the United States, having talked to many archivists here at, UC at UCLA, at the Library of Congress, that not much is known about what they've got what, and how they even have it. You know, there's all kinds of rumors that uh, when, uh, Russia uh, took over certain countries after World War II, you know, uh, or they, or they, or they got the spoils of the Nazis, things like that. With the film went right to this uh, archive, and that's how they have some films that we in the United States don't have. Apparently, a lot of things have turned up in the Russian archive that that uh, archivists here have been looking for for a long time. In our case, we luckily had some allied, uh, like-minded. Russian student animation fan friends who went through their archive and found this film sitting there. Mm -hmm. And they contacted me, contacted Leonard Malton, and we, we ended up, uh, because I'm involved with ASIFA Hollywood, ASIFA is the group, it's an international group around the world of animators, it's been around for decades in Hollywood, we do the Annie Awards. Um, they, came, they came to me, they said, we found this film, what can we do about it? Luckily for me, I run a preservation program for a center that we use funds from that organization to preserve several films a year. They cost thousands of dollars to preserve. I won't go into that story. Maybe that's what, maybe that would be the perfect show to do up here, is some of the great things that we've preserved uh, uh, to a seat for Hollywood. And um, a lot of great stuff. Uh, the, uh, the, um, <laughs> who was that? The, uh, uh, anyway, what I was able to do was I was able to connect the funds from our organization with UCLA Film Archive and us contacting the Russian Film Archive. And believe me, this was not an easy thing. This took about two years to accomplish. It turns out that archives in America if they're getting any funding from the United States government, are literally not allowed to contact certain countries like Russia. You know, they're, you're not, they're not allowed to work with Russia. And by the way, obviously today it would be impossible, literally today. This was all done a few years ago before all the current problems with, uh, with, with, you know, with us and Russia in particular. So um, uh, to painstaking negotiations, and ways of getting this film over here that are unbelievable. I'm not even going to go into all the details now. We have been able to, let's just say, copy the film. They copied it as a negative. Uh, so we have negatives, we have prints, we have a digital restoration. Uh, the film now exists again. And as you'll see, it's, it, it was in pretty good shape to begin with. So it's pretty mint, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Honestly, it's the, the late, later cartoons in the Fleischer canon. 
the later Betty Boops, if you're a fan, they're not that great. Mm -hmm. uh, if you like cartoons as I do, like Sally Swain, if you know that one, uh, that one has some pretty crazy dancing in it. That's one of the highlights of this film, is this just crazy Fleischer dancing. Uh, and, um, but it's, it's fun, and, 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 and it's great. I'm just very proud to have anything to have done with it. And when I heard, I was, uh, when they asked me to uh, come up here, I said, hey, let's throw something on extra. Here's something I was involved with. Let's do it. So that's my introduction for that film. Let's look at it. Thank you all for coming today. And I will, am I doing a Q&A yes, or what am I doing? Yes, you are. Oh, okay. She's okay. making me do something. All right. Well, thank you, Jerry, for coming. Now, I want to, I have some questions. So how many of you came specifically to see the cartoons? That's what you want to see. Okay. How many came because Jerry Beck came? Yeah, how many? Yeah, I don't know. All right, great. Well, it's nice to see there's an equal amount of people. All right, so we're going to show our film. And then when that's over, then we'll pull up a chair or you can stand, whatever you want to do, and we'll do Q&A for all things cartoon. Thank you.